Okay. Normal demonstrate a uh, nozzle inspection or removal and cleaning. Require two wrenches, a 5 8 inch wrench. In this case, we're using an adjustable. It's readily available for us. So it's a two piece. Cracking it loose. see clear through the other side. That's a good example of a clean nozzle. This, of course, hasn't been used. All right? Right. All right. Now I'll we'll go. check the O-ring and make sure it's good, no cracks or anything in it. Okay. Take the orifice and make sure there's, look through it, make sure there's no blockage in that little tiny hole there. You'll have to hold it up to the light to Ooh, that look is through a tight, it. That is a small piece. We can yeah. barely focus on it. Okay, so that's the orifice. You want to check this as well. It may require you to poke a piece of wire through the center of it. Right, and blow some air through it. Blow some air through, get any particulate matter that might be stuck in there apart. All right. And then check the head of it to make sure there's no blockage or wear on the end of it. Okay. Let's look, we're examining for blockages and erosion on the on the head. Now he's going to reassemble the, the uh, nozzle. A, on, this, on the jet, there's a stem sticking down from the head. You want to make sure that goes in first. Got it. And then just screw it back together and just snug it down. Don't crank it real hard. Beautiful. And you just want to snug that back up. It's brass, so you don't want to go crazy. Just, just snug. And just make sure you can see the orifice in there and the hole's straight. And that you didn't get in cockeyed. Make sure everything's lined up straight. Right. Okay, so you then just hold it to the light and look for it. Got it. All right, great. Thank you. Here we have an example of a of a nozzle that's been in use for quite a long time. The uh, the rubber O-ring is just about flattened out on the backside. It's obviously completely plugged. And if you look on this side here, it's got some wear. It's not the worst, not in the worst shape, but it does have some wear. So, I mean, for the price of the nozzle, it might make sense to replace something like this. Through the tip of that. One, two, three, eight there, and three eight there. So, how much? Uh, three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch up and down to the center of the nozzle, right. the electrodes. That's on the left side and the right side. Right. And then three sixteenths apart. And three sixteenths of an inch apart. Okay, really close there. So what you do is you take the wrench and you crack loose that jam nut yeah. and you tighten it back up once the adjustment's yep. made. I go back and double check our uh, measurement, our measure. measurement one more time. Awesome. Make sure it didn't move when we tightened it. Right. Three eighths. Three eighths. And three sixteenths. And make sure they're pretty fresh with the end of the nozzle there. Perfect. Thank you.
Norm is going to remove the plate on the end of our compressor, our onboard compressor. The point of this is to inspect the veins located inside the compressor. In the event you, you ever need to replace them, this will give you some familiarity of how this operation works. There you are. So this is an example of a brand new or good vein. Carbon plates. And it's deviled on one side. Deviled on one side, okay. And if you look at your housing, your hub here, okay. you want the bevel to go the same way as the angle of the hub. Angle of the housing. So that's your rotary vane air compressor. Right. That's how it looks on the inside. And four of them in there. Four of them in there. So as that rotates, it creates air pressure. Pretty simple device, easy to service. Last, last a good long time for the investment. And this is the carbon plate, and you want to make sure when you take it apart, there's no grooves wore in here. Okay. So the idea is to examine the carbon plate at the end of the uh, housing. On the end cap, there's your carbon plate, and if you see deep grooves worn into that unit, then you need to replace that as well. Right. And you want to make sure this here hub is flush with the housing. Okay. So if it's starting to slip off, that could be what's grooving it. Okay. So if that hub is starting to slip off, um, then we need to investigate further. Right. Okay, once the inspection or vein repair is complete, you're re reinstalling the end cap on the compressor, you want them just, you just want to snug that cap, just, just enough. Norm's got two fingers on there. Check your to see if it come up on you. Make sure you turn the burner back on pressure will automatically kick on and you can as you can see we've got 12 pounds of air so everything worked out on this job The idea is you can force the ash or any solid waste that accumulates across the inside of the combustion chamber to one end for vacuuming or simply push it straight into a trash can like the one Lonnie's holding on the other side there. Easy cleaning. something on the other side. Perfect, you know? Don't have to vacuum it even. And then you take this tool and do the same thing. Just shove it through with your bucket again on the other side. That's how easy it is to clean. That's called pass-through cleaning.
Yep. Okay, we have Norm removing the access cover on the SunTech A2RA pump by removing the, uh, the hex screws or hex bolts, four corners. The idea here is to gain access to the screen inside the pump or the filter for routine maintenance. Now Norm will remove the cover, take a peek inside, this is an old pump, not pretty recent. What do we have? How are we looking? In pretty good shape? Yep. Great. Okay. So this is a, a pretty basic procedure. Inspect the gasket, make sure you didn't, there's no cracks or anything in it. Okay. Put it back together. Make sure it's all clean. Great. And there you go. Okay, nor normal demonstrate the removal of the uh, lock nut and the solenoid, electric solenoid switch that holds pressure between the burner and the pump when the pump is not running. Occasion, just in case the possibility comes up where you may need to open this baby up and get inside there and do some cleaning if something happens to get past the filter in the unlikely event. Okay, so that's the actual orifice. And you want the springs going first in the public. When you, re when you uh, reassemble it, the spring goes in first. So Norm, if you could demonstrate that, please. There's your spring on the end of that little switch. You want to check there, make sure there's no blockage in them. Make sure there's maybe, no blockage here. Maybe or... blow through them, each, uh, make sure there's nothing in there. Okay. Tighten that back up. The wrench on it. Five eighths inch. Okay. That's the bottom plate. Good place. Then you put the washer in position. And reinstall the jam nut there. And the final tightening. So it's relatively easy thing to take apart, clean, and reinstall. And uh, now you know how, just in case situation comes where you need to get inside there and clean this unit out. Thank you. Okay, what we're doing here is removing the screw that holds the transform ignition transformer in, into position and Norm is going to demonstrate how to test to see if you have spark. If you have a good or bad ignition transformer. Uh, as you can 
see when the springs are making contact, there's a blue spark inside there. This tells us that we have a good ignition transformer and, uh, and we're all set. Now if you didn't have that or you had extremely weak spark making contact with the, uh, the electrodes, you could either have uh, some bad springs or uh, a potentially bad transformer. This video gives you an idea to how to, on how to diagnose that.